with this little cable running from the rear wheel, this does not look like normal M365. Front and rear suspension, no brake cables, even no brakes. And this little bag here probably well describing what's happening in the owner's head. Look, look, look around, no cars, and off we go. So I speed up, I get to the corner, slow down, into the corner, I accelerate. That completely changes the way you can corner this thing. Now you can, you can just accelerate through the corner. It's, it's a totally different scooter. I'm not riding the same scooter anymore. This dynamic is ridiculous. And it still has more power. I'm not using full power. Because I can go through this little forest road uphill right now, gaining speed, climbing, you know, my uh, wrong speedometer shows 32 kilometers an hour climbing up the hill. Now, if we go down this little hill, I can actually see 38. I'm intrigued how this scooter rides and handles. And I'm not even talking about speed now, because the standard stock 250 watt nominal rated Xiaomi motors won't spin faster than 35 km an hour. People install 10 inch tires so they can go 37, 38, and of course you can upgrade to 12S battery, then the max speed will be around 40. But the speed is not the key importance for me. What I would like to show you is the acceleration. While there is maybe not that much impact on the maximum speed, but the time needed to reach that speed is reduced dramatically, probably twice, I don't know. But the two motors accelerate really, really, really fast. If you have been following our channel for a while, you know that we like to drag race our scooters. And you also probably know that I lose all of the drag races to my wife, because she is like twice lighter than I am. And yeah, so I miserably lost all the drag races. And now I think we have a chance. So she will take the Kugu S1, which was like a leader in the drag races of these city scooters. And I will take this uh, double motor M365. And maybe this time I can get some payback. We made ourselves a little start line and a little finish line as well. We made sure that our scooters are fully charged and we were ready to go. So how do you feel after losing? <laughs> Terrible. It's a disaster. Yeah, you see? It's impossible. I know that feeling. I lost every drag race to you. Every single one, but not this one. This is what I mean about acceleration of this scooter. It's insane. So what are we going to do next? We're going to jump back into my garage and I will show you how can you install two motors as well. Uh, I myself was looking for a video like that. I couldn't find one, so I made one. I know. So first of all, guys, I hope you can excuse me the sound. I have two 3D printers working around me and I cannot stop it now. And I want to finish filming this video. If you have been following my channel, you probably know that I always provide both positive and negative sides around the improvements, projects, products. So there are apparently quite some downsides to the improvement of this. You get this insane acceleration, probably more speed, but of course there are downsides. First of all, you will lose your range because now you're running on more power and you will drive less kilometers unless you're going for a bitter, uh, bitter? Unless you're going for a bigger battery pack. So the second obvious one is the weight of the scooter is increasing and increasing and increasing. You add suspensions, you add <coughs> extra batteries, you add extra motors. Your scooter is no longer a lightweight thing you can just take you know, into the bus. 
It's more a heavy duty thing which you don't want to carry around. It's possible, but it's not comfortable. The third thing is the lifespan of your components. I have actually managed to burn my output fuse for Rita device because I was using too much power. Rita is rated for 30 amps on the external battery. Actually, my battery BMS is rated for 20 amps. I don't know how that didn't burn because I use like more than 20 amps on each motor and controller to run. So you need to be careful how many watts you set. Probably you will burn things using too much power and using two controllers. And there is a high risk of your battery overheating. You need to watch the temperatures, be aware of where they stand in order to avoid overheating something or burning something in your system. And you most probably will. Now I don't have my Rita device installed and without, if you go with two motors without Rita device, you don't have any battery data, any battery BMS data going to your controller. Meaning you won't see the voltage of your battery, you don't know how much range is left in your battery. So of course you could keep the stock battery in, but as you can see right here, after you install two controllers in a way that they use the scooter's body as a heat sink through applied thermal paste, there is no much space left for the stock battery. So you either need to find where to install the controller or where to install the original or external battery. The next one is brakes. Now my scooter doesn't have any mechanical brakes. I have ordered the, the cover kit and the brake kit from Monorim. I'm waiting for it to arrive, so I hope I can improve on it. But until they arrive, I only have the electrical brake coming from both motors. And it's great, don't get me wrong. It stops the scooter very efficiently, it's all fine, until something fails. We already talked that there is a bigger chance of something failing, like your battery, for example. And if your battery fails, there is no way to regenerate that energy. And your brakes won't simply be working. Also have that in mind if you, you, know, if you have just charged your battery and you're rolling downhill, and two motors are regenerating the energy, you need to have where to regenerate it too. If your battery is full, you can probably burn something or your battery will just stop accepting the charge and then you have no brakes left. Have that in mind. One more is that now my scooter is not turning off. I will turn off the primary dashboard. But the secondary one, you can see it's on. And if I just release the primary one, it will get powered up again. So I set in the firmware time of 30 seconds and after 30 seconds of doing nothing with my scooter they would both turn off. I, I believe it's solvable. At the worst case scenario I can solve it with external key or external power button. And last but not least, installation like this will probably avoid your scooter's warranty. Let's take a look at the installation in a nutshell. First, you need Xiaomi M365 or M365 Pro scooter. Then, of course, you need the second motor. You will need to take out the stock rear wheel, install the motor. And then, of course, you will need a second controller to control that motor. In order to have enough space to install the second controller, I took out the stock M365 battery and installed the external battery in the Wildman bag instead. I also installed the second controller next to the first one. And then you will need a new dashboard. It has to be Xiaomi M365 Pro dashboard. So you take out the stock Xiaomi M365 dashboard and put it in the down tube right here. And you install the Pro dashboard instead of the original one. Some extra things to consider. You will need a cable to connect both dashboards to the controller. Now that both dashboards could understand your throttle and brake signals, you will need to splice into the primary dashboard's loom. And you're looking for this green and blue cable right here, and you need to connect secondary dashboard with these cables. So probably you will need some soldering skills right here. And there is one more connection that you need to make, that's the positive terminal at the bottom of the dashboard. And while the color might be different, you need to check the positive terminal on the right side and connect it to the other dashboard. And you can do it either at the top, where you put both dashboards, or next to the both controllers, if you install them next to each other. You will need to take some XT30 connectors and make the Y connector, or connect both controllers in parallel to the battery. And then you will have to probably cut the motor cable and then resolder it later again after you get it through the hole that you drill in the body towards the battery compartment. 
and connect it to the secondary controller. So one of the very first things you're gonna need for this installation is of course the second motor. And in order to install this motor, you will need to have something like this spacer kit. Normally there is a spacer you put inside and there is a nut which you need to install here. The installation itself is pretty straightforward. You just drill the hole and then you make a cutout and make these things in sequence as I just said. First you drill the hole and then you make a cutout because if you first make a cutout it will be unbelievably hard to drill in the center. In order to mark the place for a cut I screwed the old plate from the opposite side so now I can clearly mark my uh, cutting path I know where to cut. Now as you can see the cable is running through the side here I just use now the zip ties to attach it and then I made a hole in the side of the deck of the scooter where it enters the battery compartment. Another thing to mention is the grommet for the cable. I have this ugly looking one TPU grommet which I made with a 3D pen. It does the job for now. I will 3D print the other one or you can buy some cable grommets to you know both water seal your battery compartment and also protect the cable from getting damaged. Our battery compartment is pretty empty so there is actually enough space to install I don't know I'll need to measure but probably I will install my 12S battery right here at the end and there is enough space to install two controllers next to each other in a way so that they are getting enough cooling from the frame of the scooter through the thermal paste that is applied underneath them. As you can see that this is the Y split, this is coming from my uh, battery and it splits into one controller and the other controller. So this is the primary one where the front motor is wired in and this is the secondary one where the second motor is wired in. Now if you continue talking about the wiring, you can see that this uh, red cable uh, splits also into, into two. So the top pin of the top connector is connected on both controllers. So it's coming here and it's connecting down there. So this will make sure that you can power both controllers at the same time, despite of which dashboard and on off button do you use. My rear light cable is waiting for the replacement part, so it's not connected yet. But you can find with the multimeter which pin on the bottom connector of the secondary controller provides the positive terminal and you can plug in your rear light cable right there. If I take this out, you can see that this is where my secondary standard M365 dashboard is living. Pro dashboard as your standard or your primary dashboard and it has a cable running down which you can see right here so the gray cable running down and connecting into primary controller and then you have your secondary dashboard which is the standard M365 dashboard without, uh, without the LCD screen and it also has a cable that's running down the tube and connecting to the secondary controller. And in order for your both dashboards to receive the throttle and brake signals, you need to connect the green wire to the green wire and blue wire to the blue wire. Look at the top pin, the blue wire is the second wire on the right side and the green one is the second from the left side. And so my secondary dashboard with two cables sticking out is simply hanging out in the tube that's going down so I just push it in together with all the cables and uh, install the steering bar. Now when you install everything you want to make sure that your both motors are spinning before you you know close all the lids and so on. So while I was doing that I had a mess on my table and I actually burned one raw dashboard. I actually have burned one Xiaomi M365 standard dashboard. I actually have burned two Xiaomi M365 controllers and I managed to even burn the output fuse for the Rita device which now I need to disassemble and why I'm saying this there are risks involved and you need to be very careful. I burned these four things just because of a little short circuit that I made myself and I burned the fuse here because I used like I don't know 30-40 amps uh, on Rita device while the output is uh, rated for 30 
and I went 40 or, or more. Before we continue, I just want to mention that this project is not done. So I am sharing it with you while it's not completed. And in order for it to be completed, there are several things I still want to solve. One is I want to make a different custom battery and install it under the deck. I have so much floor space here. It's really, my scooter is really high now with both air suspensions and 10 inch tires on both wheels. So I have enough space to actually move this battery from here or install double batteries, one here and one down there at the end behind all these controllers. The second one, my secondary controller for the rear motor is now only installed with one bolt or one screw holding it. I need to make a bracket to, to make it better, 3D print an adapter for it. And I will let you know when I do that, I can, share my, I can share my CAD files and you will be able to install it yourself. The next one is my rear light cable is not connected because my rear light is in my hands and it's not installed on my fender actually. So I need to install that and connect my rear light. I need to fix my Rita device because now I don't see battery voltage on the dashboard and I don't know how far can I drive. So I need to fix my Rita, install it back into the scooter. And I need to receive this monorim disc brake cover for one of the motors and then install the XTech brake caliper with a disc brake. And then I will have mechanical brakes on my scooter. So these are still outstanding things I want to make. And I have some more exciting things coming. I have ordered 500 watt motor. If you want to see me installing and playing around with these things, you know what to do, right? There is a subscribe button on YouTube. So let's continue into the installation. All right, so this is the Shire Gen version 2.05 firmware generator. There are several warnings here which you need to read. So first of all, to migrate and upgrade firmware, you only need to use the flasher, which is at the bottom of the page. So when I scroll to the bottom of the page, there is a link to download the Android application. And you need to use this modified down G XG mod version to flash this firmware that you can generate with this generator. And you should not use any other firmwares with this application to flash. Furthermore, when you migrate, then you need to flash this new firmware two times, meaning you flash it once, you check the version and you flash it again. And also you need to, before you start flashing anything from here, you need to use either simple down G, either the Shia flasher application and upgrade your M365 controllers into version 1.41 or higher. And I would actually recommend also you to update the BLE to 0.9.0 version uh, for, and you need to do that for both dashboards. So you need to connect both dashboards to both controllers and make sure that you have the firmware of 1.41 and also BLE on uh, 090 version. All right, when you sort it, when we sorted that out, we can take a look at the parameters. I will not go through all the parameters that we need to set, but I will only stay at the ones that I think are important ones to mention. And you can freely choose the other ones. You know, there is a clear description of what do they do. So just read and, uh, and choose your own parameters for that. First of all, you will have to note and enter the serial number of your scooter. So be sure to do that. Then on the important parameters, First of all, on brake lever. So you can make your scooter brake faster. You know, you can set like 40 amps current. But remember that you're setting it for one controller and you will also set 40 amps for the other controller. I have a reason to believe that these values are not correct. I don't believe that the motor is generating like 40 amps because I had them set on 40 amps and I was braking to the max. So two motors, 40 amps each, 80 amps sending to my battery, my battery or BMS or Rita device or something else would have burned immediately from using this uh, level of power. And the same, I don't trust the power voltages here, but I will get to them in a second. So be careful with your brakes, especially when the battery is full and be careful of what parameters do you set here. The next one, I use anti long after free ride. Now, if you get here to the current for S mode or D mode or uh, maximum battery current, just remember that you will double it because you use two motors. So if you say current limit on S mode 25 amps, remember that you will use the same firmware for both motors and that means you will be running 50 amps. Now again, I have a reason belie to believe that this is incorrect value. This is not real life 50 amps because I actually had them set to like 
35,000 just to try and see if something burns out. And my 20 amp rated BMS uh, on a battery is not burning. It's getting mildly warm. It's not even getting hot after like five minutes, right? So there is no way I'm pulling 70 amps and not overheating the battery, which is rated for 20 amps. I don't believe these values are true. And that's why I cannot recommend you any safe value or any, you know, recommended value. You will have to figure out for yourself. What is important to set boot with eco mode. You want your both dashboards to be aligned every time they turn on and you want them both to turn on in the same mode. So the way of making sure of this is booting them with eco mode each and every time. So this is the important one you have to set. Others are up to you. If you're using the higher voltage battery, of course, set the higher voltage and uh, you can remove the charging mode also in that case. So, and this is the BMS data support for battery. So if you click on this one, and this is important one, you can remove all the checks that uh, your controller is doing on the BMS. And basically that will allow you to use any kind of batteries you want without getting uh, BMS data errors. This is exactly why I use this Shiogen uh, firmware generator because that's the only one that I saw yet to enable uh, using the controller without BMS data. And then of course, idle time to shut down, I would recommend to reduce just in case if your scooter is not turning off like mine. So you have like uh, less idle time to wait until it gets off. All right, others are really up to you to choose all the beeps and auto lights and strobes and whatnot. Um, then I also use the swap main button functions, meaning that with a single click of a button, single tap on the button. Uh, I switch the modes from D to S uh, and if I want headlight on, I need to double click the button. And I use enable write permissions for internal, internal registers. So I think these are the key ones that you need to, you know, uh, make sure you have selected. Uh, but the other ones you are free to choose and, and, and set the firmware as you want. So when you make that, you can press on make firmware button. And yeah, if you enter the correct serial number, you have your firmware downloaded. And then you just need to flash it twice on both controllers with the dashboards connected. Remember BLE090, uh, at least 1.4.1 firmware for the basis. I actually use 1.5.2. And then after you flash it, if everything is, is okay, your controller should be working and motor should be spinning. If for any reason you messed up with the firmware or something went wrong, don't get scared or sad. Uh, don't ask me how I know that, but uh, you can just solder on a couple of pins on your controllers, buy uh, for like five, six euros uh, ST-Link V2 programmer and find video on YouTube how to restore to the basic <laughs> standard firmware on your controller. This video is already too long. Drop your questions in the comments down below and I hope to see you in the next one guys. Cheers!